Good morning, everybody. I'm down here on the coast of Maine again. Tide's way out, as you can see. Just got a little one today, 32 by 20. They're gonna, I guess they're gonna move this house here back onto this, so probably that thing didn't have a foundation. So this is what we just put in this floor today. And then uh, we got another, we got another job we're gonna go to afterwards, but this is the job for this morning. Concrete's here, he's mixing up. We're gonna get ready to go. Hey guys, so they're gonna move, like I said, they're gonna move that camp on this. So this is basically just a crawl space, bull float finish. So all we gotta do is get it poured out, screeded, bull floated, as smooth as we can get it. And then we can just leave it like that because they're basically just gonna put the utilities down here, you know, like the water tank, the boiler, and uh, any other type of utilities they need. So no one's really ever gonna come down here for storage or anything like that. They just wanted, for whatever reason, they wanted a frost wall under that camp. Um, I don't know why they don't tell us that but these floors are what I consider pretty easy let me know down in the comments if you think these floors are easy you know either now before watching us or after watching us you know if you if there's something you guys think you could do we're getting the creek poured right out we still use our regular floor mix on this it's a 3500 pound mix it actually looks kind of bony to me in the video it looks like the some of the stone is kind of separating from some of the paste. We've been having a little trouble with that this year for whatever reason. Some of these no air mixes, you know, the aggregate seems to want to just separate a little bit from the concrete paste. When you pour concrete with a little bit of air in it, it doesn't seem to do that. Uh, we, we do pour quite a bit of concrete with air in it because we're from Maine, we have a lot of freeze and thaw cycles, but some of these inside jobs we have no air, so there's, we, we get to see both. And this year, the no air mixes have been kind of bony. We also use a, in case you guys don't know, we use a mid-range water reducer in all our concrete mixes. So that allows us to wet it up and pour it quite a bit looser than most people. So if you think the concrete's kind of wet, that's why <laughs> we, it's supposed to be, because we can do that. Here's my little shoot trick. We can we take that end shoot off sometimes when we're pouring over the wall, just flip it over and then just pour the creek right out of the chute like that. That really cuts down on the splatters and it it allows us to just keep dumping it right out without moving the truck ahead for for at least this pass. Tia's over there in the corner. You know, you can barely see her right now, but she's over there magging the edges. We shot grades with the laser. The laser's actually in that little bond out there. Over, if you look over towards the water on the left, we got our laser over there. So what we did before concrete showed up is we shot our grades in here and we snapped a red chalk line around there. You can kind of see it over there on the bottom of that right, that wall on the right. You can see a line. That's actually a, a red chalk line that we snapped around. And that's what T is magging the edges to. So we'll use that pad around the edge to screed off from here. You'll see that in a minute. And then I'll shoot a couple wet pads in the middle with the laser. 32 by 20 was the size of this thing. And, you know, for us, that's, that's quite small. <laughs> but most of the time, two of us would just come and pour something like this. You know, but on this day... All we had to do was pour this, and then we had a big job to go form up and get ready for the next day. So, no sense of only sending two people when you can bring four. And that's the way I think anyway. I used to, when I first started working doing concrete, I worked for a commercial company. And we were always pouring shorthanded stuff too big. Uh, the guy I worked for just thought volume was, was everything, and... We would always be short-handed, so I basically poured short-handed for five years, four to five years, 
And we're talking, you know, we had crews anywhere from four guys to 15 guys at times. And just, you know, the more guys we had, the more square footage. 15,000 square feet, 25,000 square feet. Always seemed like we were shorthanded. So I hate porn shorthanded. I just soon have one or two extra people myself just to make my life a little easier. <laughs> now Darren's gone back. He's mag magging a few edges now. Don't really need two people breaking down right now. I mean, that shoot, just moving that shoot around with my foot like that helps. And then with the slump we pour, and then you got loop back there, just kind of moving it around. That's all you really need. We'll fill, we'll fill this whole like rectangular section in. And then over there to the right, there's a little, what we call a bulkhead. That little section is actually outside the structure and they'll build, you know, they'll build what they call like a little dog house over it. So you can go into this crawl space from the outside. You don't even have to go in the building to get into this crawl space. We call those bulkheads up here in Maine. I don't know what you guys call them in other places, but you know, you can let us know that down in the comments too. The concrete, the thickness of the floor is basically about four inches thick. That's pretty standard for all the basements and crawl spaces we pour. Yeah, you can see what I'm doing now. So I mag float a little pad there, maybe two by two, three by three. Check it with a laser. If it's right on grade, I exit. That means don't step there. <laughs> and then uh, if it's not on grade, then I either mag, mag it down a little lower or I throw some concrete on it, mag it up a little higher and recheck it. But basically that's right flat with what Tia and Darren were magging around the edge. And then we just strike things off using a magnesium float. We just figured this was so small we didn't break out the, the battery screed on this one. We do have a battery vibrating screed. But just because the size of this is so small we can hand screed like this as fast and basically just as easy as using that the battery screed. So that's why we didn't pull it out. We actually kind of got this section up here a little bit low. You can see them guys, T and Darren, are having to really push the concrete up so we don't have to stop. Until eventually, you know, we had to stop. So all we'll do is we'll just back the truck back up, get a little bit more crete right there, and have at it again. That's what the concrete driver is there for. He's there to help make your job easier, you know. He can sit and wait there a little bit. You got so much time per yard to dump these things out. So typically it says on the slip how much time you have. Our slips that we get, it says about seven minutes per yard. So if there's if there's eight yards of concrete here, that gives us 56 minutes to get this dumped. And that's actually quite a bit of time. In reality, it probably took, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes for us to do this. Again, we got it low again. <laughs> Not doing too good today. Maybe it's a Monday. I don't know. You can see how we screed that thing. Each one, I'm leaving a little bit of line on the end of mine. When I screed, you can see kind of that straight line coming down. And look over there on the left. Luke's doing the same thing. He left kind of a line in the pad. When we leave that line, that means we're we striking it off flat or level, however you want to call it. No humps, no dips. If, if we really dug in, you could tell. And if we didn't leave that line, that means we're not striking it down on the pad, which would leave you a hump. You can see I'm doing my own one-handed screeding right there. <laughs> you know you're old when you just screed with one hand. Now back and forth with a bow float. This stuff, bow float, is pretty nice, especially at that slump. Trying to get it fairly smooth when I bow float, not leave any rock holes, not leave any big divots, not leave any big lines from the bow float, because that's going to be the finished floor now. Ooh, see, I hit the wall there with a the handle <laughs> as I was pulling it back, so I didn't get the handle high enough, so I got to go over that section again. Yeah, nice and smooth.
They give me the easy job. Bull floating's the easy job, I think. So, I don't know. 40, 41 years of experience, is, I earned the bull float job. <laughs> He is doing a good job raking there, so we got it a little bit low over there, too. I don't know what it was today. Usually we don't get it low. If anything, we usually get it high. Now they're just waiting for me. I guess I'm going too slow. We'll get a little bit more creep back there. So them guys can keep working, and I can finish my bull float job. This was, we were about an hour and 15 minutes away from the shop today. <clears throat> I live inland a little bit. I don't live right on the ocean like this. But a lot of these jobs, this was like a, like an inlet from the ocean. It wasn't like right, right exactly on the ocean. But you could, if you had a boat out there, you could take it from where this place is right out into the ocean in just a matter of minutes. And the tide was out really, really low. The tides here in Maine, they go... I don't know how far up and down they go, but compared to compared to like Florida where the tide barely moves at all, this one will go up and down 10, 12, 15 feet sometimes from high tide to low tide. And it's every 12 hours too. You get a high tide and a low tide every 12 hours, so you can pretty much count on that. Yeah, now I'm pretty fast. See how fast I am at both floating that? That was pretty cool. So I guess, I guess because I didn't work hard enough, them guys made me finish this off with a little four-foot straight hitch. That was my penalty for bull floating. I'm going to work my way right into that little corner, and they're going to leave me right there. That's what we call kick screen, though. So we work our way backwards and kick kick the mud into our, our boot prints so we don't have to keep stopping every two or three poles. We can just keep going. Yeah, I'm going to do the best I can right now not to leave any deep ridges. So when they, when they deck this over, they'll put a new floor decking system over this. You know, it'll be really dark down here so they won't be able to see much anyway, but then they'll move that that camp or whatever that was, that little house. Actually, no, they'll set the house right on top. That's what them big that's what the big dropouts are on, on that north side. They're on the left and the right, and then they got them too right here on the south side. So they'll run big steel beams through there from the when they lift that house, then they'll pull them beams out those drops. Then they'll fill those drops in just with regular cement blocks, grout them in. Those aren't going to be windows afterwards. And I'm just going to work my way out the bulkhead. So let me know, guys, down in the comments if you think something like this is easy or not. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. If you like these kind of videos, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.